guys, and good morning, and welcome to the show. I'm really glad to have you guys here. Now, I'm getting the show on a little bit early this morning because i got to go visit Pop at the hospital. And uh, so, anyway, we're going to get started just a little bit early today, and we're going to get right into it, and we're going to open up the charts right here and start with silver. Start with the silver price, you know. You know, what we're seeing is we're seeing the silver price hanging in there kind of up close to 16 bucks. And, you know, let's pull the chart down a little bit here so we can see a little bit better. You know, it's looking good. You know, it's it's touching the top of the chart here. It's like it's it's getting up near the top of the chart. It's it's uh, it's up on the high side of its range. And I, I like to see that. Let's check gold just for a second here and see what gold is doing. Gold's up a dollar seventy, and it's it's up at thirteen twenty nine. Now gold did touch uh thirteen fifty, almost touched thirteen fifty there a little while ago, but it's at thirteen twenty nine. It settled in, and it's doing good too. Uh, now Bitcoin, we're going to talk about Bitcoin just a little bit. Bitcoin had a flash crash yesterday. Uh, if we go back and we take a look, uh, let's see, we probably spot it in the thirty minute here. Uh, here's your flash crash right here. And it's settled in now at a price of about 37.80. That's what it's running at this morning. But it was up to 41.90 before the flash crash. And but if we take a look and we put this all into perspective, if we go back to the 12-hour uh, chart here and take a look and we put this into perspective, what we can actually see is is this is just normal movements at the bottom of a bull, of a bear market. That's what we're seeing: normal movements at the bottom of a bear market. And for me, myself, personally, just personally, I consider this kind of a buy signal for me, you know, a little bit. Uh, let's take a look now at cryptocurrency market capitalizations. $128.5 billion with Bitcoin dominance at 52.4%. And we're looking at the coins here all taking a dipsy doodle down with that flash crash because they all follow Bitcoin. But we're looking at them all stabilizing in around the same price. Litecoin, my favorite coin, is at $44.73. Now, let's take a look at the pre-market on the Dow Jones. She's up 157 points on the pre-market. Um, so, that's what we're looking at on the pre-market, up 156 points. Doesn't really surprise me any, to tell you the truth. Uh, let's move on here and take a look at crude oil today. And crude oil is up 13 cents, 0.23 percent. Ever since it made this bottom, you know, it's been slowly creeping upwards. So now let's take a look at bonds and rates. And we're up all the way across the board. Bond yields are rising. Uh, on the 10-year, it's risen two basis points, which is quite a little bit. On the five-year, even more, 2.3 basis points. So bond yields are rising today. Uh, that's what we're seeing with bond yields. Uh, now, we're going to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. 96.35. And we got a falling dollar index today, uh, but it's not falling substantially. It's fell basically... Uh, 14 basis points. Uh, so that's only about, well, that's, that's just over 10% of one point. Uh, of, so of one one point on the on the dollar index. So it's, it's not really that much. It hasn't fell that much today. But uh, it's at 96.35. You know, it's been staying in that 96 range for a long time now. Uh, let's take a look at Deutsche Bank, see if she's sneaking up on us today. What we see with Deutsche Bank today is, uh, if we go back to the six months, we can see that it's bottom bouncing, basically. She's fell down to a certain range here and now, and she's bottom bouncing along that range. Uh, we're going to have to keep a really close eye on Deutsche Bank. I mean, it could flop over any time, you know, it, really seriously. It, it's it's uh, doggy paddling uh, it, it, in the deep end of the swimming pool. That's what Deutsche Bank's doing. We got to keep, really keep our eye on Deutsche Bank because Deutsche Bank could be very unsettling to the financial system if it suddenly goes down. It could extend out a shock to the financial system. Uh, I don't think it would take the financial system down, but it would definitely be a layman moment, if you know what a layman moment is. Uh, now, we're going to take a look here at the Baltic Dry Index. 
The Baltic Dry Index has been lower, but it's really low right now. And this is shipping, you know. Uh, and the trade war has an awful lot to do with this. And China's undergoing a slowdown right now. Tremendous slowdown in China. I think that the Chinese real estate market has finally got to the point where it's ready to burst. And that is worse than Deutsche Bank. That will take down the entire world economy. The Chinese, uh, the shadow banking system is intrinsically tied like this to the real estate market in China. You know, because an awful lot of the shadow banking have, uh, what they were doing was they were selling what's called wealth management products to the Chinese. And these wealth management products are basically, it's basically a Ponzi scheme. But how it works is a lot of these companies that sell wealth management products are also uh, are also construction firms and stuff that work in real estate. And they also sell, they'll sell you, they'll sell you your wealth management product, which is basically a package of like, uh, of, uh, of, of money that you invest with them. And they use that money in turn to build real estate. And then they'll sell you the real estate too. But it's all uh, put together like a package deal to get the money out of the Chinese people and increasing the amounts. And, and they did during the many years. They sold them real estate and they sold them wealth management products. And they paid them like uh, high interest, high yields, like 7 8% on these wealth management products per year. So they told all their friends, hey, you know what? I'm making all kinds of money. I bought from Shangxing Corporation or whatever. Whatever the name of the you know the the wealth management product and and they're paying me really good and they tell all their friends and then all their friends come in and then their friends tell their friends friends and they all come in it's basically a Ponzi scheme <laughs> you know the ten percent five or eight percent or ten percent that they're paying them on these wealth management products is coming skimming right off the top of the new investors that are coming in you know and and so now these things have finally hit a wall and so is the real estate. And the whole thing's going to collapse, and it's huge. It represents more than 60% of the whole Chinese economy. <laughs> I mean, I can laugh. You might as well laugh as cry, because it'll take the whole world economy down with it uh, when this thing bursts, and it's getting ready to burst. Now let's take a look at the uh, three-month LIBOR right now. And what we're seeing is we're seeing the LIBOR rate did come down, I don't know if I can open that chart. It's this small one right here. Let me focus my uh, focus my my uh, uh, viewer in on it so you can see it better. Just give me a second here. Whoops. Have to take it up. There we go. I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy. Anyway, there we go. There's a three-month LIBOR, and you can see uh, that in it's slumped. It's slumped back down again. It's come back down to about, uh, uh, it was up to oh, about 2.8. You know, it's come back down. It's come down with the 10-year, with the 10-year Treasury bond yields. Now, we're going to take a look here. How's, how's the trade war going, you know, between the United States and China? And probably one of the best way to tell how this thing is going is Donald Trump's new tweet. But I'm going to tell you about this tweet. I can't figure out how to expand it to get the rest of it. He says, I am pleased to report that the United States has made substantial progress in our trade talks with China. I believe they have. They've made, they've made a lot of progress. And on important structural issues, including intellectual property protection, technology transfer, agricultural services, currency, and many other issues. As a result of these, and then it ends, and I want to read the rest, and I can't figure out how to expand it to read the rest. I was sitting there pushing the buttons, you know, and anyway, I couldn't figure out how to expand it. Or maybe that's the end. Maybe he just ended it that way. Uh, currency and many other issues. Many other issues. As a result of these very, and then it's just dot, 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 dot. I don't know. What's what must be something that comes after that. I want to read the rest. Anyway, I believe that that's the case. They've made a lot of progress. And, you know, there's an awful lot that they had to go through, like property protection, technology transfers, agricultural services, currency, all these issues. And this is what's taken them so long. But I think they're coming to a deal. That's what I think about this. I think they're I think they're going to come to a deal. And I think that we're going to see a little pop in the markets. 
Okay, of course, you got to understand something. Markets have already been pricing this in somewhat. A trade deal. So if this thing goes south, which I don't think it's going to, but if it goes south, this would be very bad for the markets. Let's take a look now at, uh, because they've been pricing it in, by the way, that's why it would go bad to the, for the markets. Fitch, negative outlook on Italy, citing high debt level. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and they're only dragging that debt level bigger and bigger because they've got a, a government in Italy now that's trying to appease the people, you know, and they are appeasing the people. The government in Italy now is appeasing the people, but at what costs, you know? Well, the government in France is appeasing the people at, a, at an extra cost of an extra $11 billion over their budget. And they're trying to appease the people. And what it's all about right now is is uh, the nationalism and, and stuff is coming back. Well, let's take a look at Spain. <clears throat> uh, this was an interesting article about Spain. This is passing Italy that becomes the world's healthiest country. And I found that interesting, you know. Well, they eat awful good. They use a lot of olive oil in their cooking and stuff. But uh, let's take a look here at Spain. Look at this. A sea of orange and red. And it says Spanish nationalism is on the rise. You know, and what it could mean for the country's politics. Well, I'll tell you what it could mean for the country's politics is these countries are going to start switching over to a political structure that is going to uh, appease the people more, like the Five Star Movement in Italy. And by doing so, they're moving away from austerity. The European Union and the boys in Brussels, they wanted austerity, 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 cuts, 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 and try to cut back so that things spending, keep spending low so the economies. And so on. That's what they want. The people are sick of this. And the people are now moving towards something where they're going to increase spending for everybody. Well, you know, <laughs> the money's all gone. <laughs> How can you increase spending when the money's all gone? You know? And, and uh, Germany, they haven't declared a recession yet. But, I mean... <laughs> They need, what is it, two quarters of negative growth to, to declare a recession. Honest to God, they're in a recession in Germany. Germany's in a recession, just like Italy. I mean, Italy just declared a recession. But Germany hasn't declared a recession. But Germany's in recession right now. How can Germany pay for all of this? Well, the answer is they can't. So what's going to happen is, is this is just going to continue to grow and swell until the finally, it, it, it's the whole European Union is, is, is in tatters right now. It's like a guy is wearing a pair of pants, you know, an old pair of jeans. And every time he sits down, he hears a rip sound. You know, I mean, it's, it's just getting to that point, you know. It's getting to be almost pointless at this point, trying to hold it together. But they're going to try to hold it together until the very last because the euro is in jeopardy. The euro as a currency is going to be in jeopardy. And I could see a time coming in the future, not too many years from now, when there is no euro. The euro goes to zero. You know, I can see that coming. And can you imagine the disruption that's going to come from that? Anyway, listen, this has been your market report this morning. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye, guys.